Hello there and welcome back to another Luminar Neo tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create the beautiful miniature effect. Now the miniature effect, also known as Diorama effect or Diorama illusion, is a process in which a photograph of a life-size location or object is made to look like a photograph of a miniature scale model. Blurring parts of the photo simulates the shallow depth of field normally encountered in a close-up photography, making the scene seems much smaller than it actually is. Now the blurring can be done either optically when the photograph is taken or digitally using the post-processing. And since we're going to be focusing on Luminar Neo, I'm going to show you how it's done directly in the application. So creating the miniature effect can be a lot of fun and it's actually super easy. So let's jump straight into it and start. Now we are in Luminar Neo, we are in the catalog module and just like always, we are looking at our sample files. If you want to follow me along, you know what to do. Jump into the description of this video, follow the link there and download the sample files so you can do the edit on your own computer. So once you're ready, import the images into the application and we can start. So first come first, we're going to select the image with the tower bridge on it. And then we're going to move it into the edit module by clicking on the edit on the top of the screen. Now you can also do that by hitting E on your keyboard. And by the way, if you want to have the most updated shortcut cheat sheet, which includes all the keyboard shortcuts for Luminar Neo, and that's for Windows and also Mac version of the application, you can get it for free on our website at cleverphotographer.com slash forward Luminar GIF. Now back to our edit, to create it, we're going to be using the help of the blur tool. So let's go into our editing toolbar and we're going to go into the creative section. Here we're going to click on the blur tool, make it all nice and visible. And we're going to make sure that we are on the Gaussian blur. So as I told you on the beginning, the miniature effect is recreated by adding blur or softness to the top and bottom of the image. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So let's start by increasing the amount. And don't worry too much about how much you add, as we can adjust it in a moment. So let's go ahead and add 10. Now the next step is really important, and that's the use of masking. So let's go ahead, click on Masking tab, and after that, select the Linear Gradient. After this, we're going to follow the instruction. We should click and drag to draw the gradient. So we're going to start from the top and we're going to paint it right here. Now we can tilt it a little bit following the bridge. We want to make the gradient quite wide. So let's say something like this and then just position it just above the bridge itself. So the idea here is that this will all be soft. The bottom will be soft and the area of the bridge and anything in between will be sharp. So that's what we're doing. We're adjusting our gradient to something like this. If you never used the gradient before, you know that by this line, there is a 0% of the mask. By this line, it's 50%. And here we get the full strength of the mask. So I think something like this is looking quite good. And we can now go back to the tool and click on adjustments. That way, once we do that, you can see that we only have the soft area at the top. So that's the first part of this effect. Once we're done, we're going to close the tool, apply to the image, and we're going to reopen it so we can apply again. Now let's go back to the edits. And here we have added 10. Good. So we go back to the tools, click on the blur, and still we are on Gaussian blur, and we're going to add 10 on our Emma. After this, we're going to do exactly the same as we done with the first blur. We're going to go into the masking, click on the linear gradient, and this time we're going to paint it at the bottom. So again, we want a nice and white, so somewhere around here. Again, tilt it a little bit following the shape of the bridge. Not completely. You don't want to do something like this. That would be too much. But let's say just somewhere around here. Then bring it down a little bit, I think somewhere around 
here. Maybe make it less white, something like this. And once you're happy, again, click on adjustments. So now we have the effect applied and it's actually looking quite good. However, I noticed that some of the blur came through on the actual subject and I would like the bridge to be really in focus. So to adjust this, we're going to go back into the masking, click on the arrow back to get into the main menu and choose brush. After this, we're just going to bring on our mask and you can do that with the keyboard shortcut. And looking at it, what we want to do, we want to remove the blur or the mask from the bridge, from this part. So to do that, we're going to go into the erase, make sure that our softness is on 100 and on strength, we're actually going to add just 30. So again, erase, 100% softness and strength on 30. And now very gently, we're going to brush over the area of the bridge. Something like this is looking great. There you have it, just the bridge. Everything else is good. Once we're happy, we can switch off the mask and double check the result. And actually, I think it's much better. Now, if we want, we can go back to the adjustments and see if maybe the 10 is too much. We can bring it down a little bit. Let's say that maybe we want to go for something like six and leave it there. Now, if you adjust one part of the blur, you also want to adjust the second part. So we're going to go back to our edits, select the first blur and adjust it down to six. Now, when we close this, it will apply both of the blurs and we are almost finished. However, to really finish the effect, we're going to do a few more things. Now, talking about miniature look, you want it to be really saturated. So first come first, we want to go into the Essentials tool, open the Color tool, and we're going to go into the Vibrant slider and bring it up. Really push it until the colors stand out. So I'm thinking somewhere around 35. We can close the Color tool, and the next tool we can use is the Enhance AI. Here we can use the accent AI again to really push the overall look. And as you can see, it's already looking much better. And to really finish it off, we're going to use the structure AI, apply it and get that kind of defined, almost like HDR look, which really works on this effect. So let's have a look at it. Uh, this is a before the structure AI and after. And let's have a look at the complete before and after by going at the bottom of our screen where we can click on the little eye icon. And here you can see the before and after. Quite easy, right? Now let's try it on another image. So you already know what to do. We're going to go back to the catalog module, select the second sample file and bring it back to the edit module. Now we're going to go a little bit faster because you already know what to do. So again, creative section of our main toolbar, and there we're going to click on the blur tool. Make sure that you are on Gaussian and let's go ahead and add the six we have used earlier. After this, we're going to go into the masking and select the linear gradient. When you do that, let's make sure that we decide which part we want to have soft. So I think about here in the center, that's the area we want to have in focus. So we're going to paint our gradient according to that. Let's bring it down a little bit and let's do something like this. Once we're happy, again, go back to the adjustments and we will continue. Close the blur tool then reopen it for the second part of our image. Again, Gaussian, six on the amount, and then going into the masking, click on the linear gradient and paint it from the bottom. So I think something like this. Adjust it if you want to. And then again, when you click on adjustments, it will disappear. And as you can see, the effect is almost done. Now, if we would want to, we could make it a little bit more strong. So we would go into the amount and push it even further. Now let's do that. Let's go for 10 on this image. So again, going back into the edits, selecting our top blur and adding 10. And then after that, as I showed you on the first image, we're going to go into the color where we increase the vibrance to add nice color to the image. Then we go into the enhance AI and use the accent AI to make everything stand out. 
And to finish it off and get that really miniature effect, we're going to use the Structure AI and again, push it a little bit to somewhere around 20. Once we finish with that, let's go back to the bottom of our image where we can see the before and after. Or additionally, we can click on the little slider next to it and we can really easily move around and see what we created and where we started. So there you have it. This is how you create the fun miniature effect in Luminar Neo. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash Luminar Gift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name was Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.